But oh, yeah. we, we go to picnics and cookouts, and everybody's taking potato salad, okay? Let's try something a little bit different, okay? There's only so many ways, you know, uh, we go to three, four consecutive cookouts. We got potato salad, we got macaroni and cheese, we got, you know, we got fried chicken. We, we can do some other things. So this is, this is our way of exposing you to some different things that you can take to cookouts, uh, to, to eat, for, show for your families, show the kids, things like that. Some healthier alternatives to what we've been doing in the past. Potato salad, it's never going away, but we, there's a lot of other things that we could be eating to make more healthy choices. You know? so, All right. All right. So let's get the show on the road. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so welcome. Welcome. Um, uh, hopefully to many more of these. Uh, and like Pastor said, uh, this is our, our way of trying to curb those generational diseases, you know. And the, the older I get, the more I see people with uh, cancer and diabetes and high blood pressure and, and all those things. And it, what, what's important to me at this point in my life is just to, to pass knowledge on to you uh, and to pa and pass knowledge on to our kids about healthy eating and the choices that we make. You know, because it is very serious, um, some of the choices we, we, uh, we're doing. Okay. Um, and we do we have a young lady that's coming out, but we're going to, Miss Judy, you want to say a couple words? I sure do. Uh, hello, hello. First of all, you know I'm a registered dietitian and I interrupt the chef a lot trying <laughs> to give him some other tips to share with you. And if you didn't pick up the, cal the, the handouts, by all means do. We got the recipes over there. We've got the nutrition. Start out by saying, as a registered dietitian, I have a different approach in life to a lot of, than a lot of dietitians. Spent a lot of time teaching, spent a lot of time working out there, and I realized from the standpoint of everybody doesn't eat the same, nor do they have to. And the older we get, the more we have to pay attention to. What we used to eat may not work today. That's the point. My philosophy is all foods fit and moderation. And the question is, what's moderation for you? It's not the same as your partners. It's not the same as your mother, dad, brother, sister. And you've also got to understand that it changes daily, daily. Yes. One accident, one change in medication can make it totally different. Today, the chef has picked a smoothie. I'll tell you right now that hydration is one of the biggest problems for us. Why? Because without hydration, we get constipated, ladies and gentlemen. We need that hydration more than those marathon runners somehow who are sitting there drinking their stuff. We try not to because we don't want to go to the bathroom too soon. <laughs> uh, we have a different approach. And this smoothie is a good way. Why? Because the smoothie's hydration, but it also has fiber. Two things that can help us with constipation two things that can help us. Uh, we're also going to do a salad, and we're going to do a salad with some strange ingredients, but they shouldn't be strange. These are all ones that are available, frozen or fresh. They're all things that are affordable, and it's nutrition with a flavor. I'm going to pass this microphone Right, over. right, right, right. And we can go all day because we're, we're, we're here now, but we talk like this all the time because we're passionate about it. We're passionate about uh food that we put in our body, we're passionate about you, we're passionate about, um, you know, if, if, if I eat better and I live one mate, one day longer, that's worth it, you know, and that's, that's, that's a personal thing, you know, that's a, that's a, that's an honest thing. So, um, Kylie, right? Kyla, um, Kyla, I, we try to keep, keep the youth involved, keep the youth, uh, involved in all this type of thing. Um, she, she offered to come up and, uh, can you answer a couple of questions for me? Um, so, you're a senior, right? Okay, you must go to Ben Hills? Okay. And what's your favorite food to eat? Your mom's mac and cheese. And it's, yeah, great, great. And like I said, we're, we're not saying never eat to eat mac and cheese because all fit, food fit at oh, some point. Yeah. Right. yeah. Do you help her in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, what's the secret of her macaroni and cheese? You want to <laughs> cool stuff, cool stuff. Okay, so we're going to put you on the spot. What, what is your favorite dish to cook? Uh, uh, 
a Korean cheese pancake. Tell us the secret. Okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. Do you have a sauce with it or anything? No? Okay. That's exciting. Exciting. Okay. So do you, you enjoy cooking? Okay. Do you follow the healthy cooking sometimes or you... I love that. I love that. I love that. Because, you know, you're a senior now, but you're not going to be a senior forever. And we want, want you to pass this on from generation to generation to generation. Some of the things we're talking about. So, okay. On a personal note, so where do you see yourself in five years from now? Okay. And I see that too. And, and you can do it. Yeah, don't, and, don't, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you can hear now? Hi. Can you hear now? Can you hear? Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> can you hear? No. Okay, so sorry about that. So um, we're going to check to see. But, but while he's doing that, you could do anything you put your mind to. When I say that to, to, to anybody, it's the truth, okay? Because... Don't ever say you can't because you're 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 you don't want to go against yourself. Okay? There's enough obstacles outside these walls, outside in, this, in in the world that says that doesn't want you to do it. So don't ever say you can't because you can do anything you put your mind to. That's for sure. Can you hear us now? Can't hear. Hi. You couldn't hear Judy then either, huh? Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, we'll. we'll Need buttons on. Oh, now you can hear us. Okay, just one last thing. So, where do you see yourself five years from now? Um, in a hospital, nursing and helping people. I love that. So you like to help people. I do. That's important. That's important that we go back and we help somebody behind us. Okay, because what I found out is somebody helped us. Okay. And my story is somebody helped me, so I, it's my job to go back and help someone else. So that's important that we do that at all times. You know, sometimes we're busy, we forget things, we got a million things going on, but we got to take time out to reach somebody behind us. If we, if everybody did that, just think how cool the world would be. If everybody just took a second to help each other out, just think how cool the world would be. Okay. And I don't know if they heard you. Can you say your white name one more time? Kyla. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she actually was nice enough to come, and she actually started this smoothie for us, and she did roast the broccoli for us. So, you know, we're up here, but it's all about the kids, too. And in, in, in future episodes, we will have kids from Westinghouse and, and community coming in to help us talk about healthy eating, talk about cooking, things like that, because it's all, you know, it's all about the kids, for sure. Because, you know, I think I'm going to be alive another 100 years, but I, I don't am so we got to be able to pass that uh, we got to be able to pass those things on to the kids keep these things going for the next generation okay thank you okay so um sorry Jean. so right. once again we're doing the uh our smoothies and our our uh salad, salad today but what i'm gonna do while we talk about some of the ingredients i'm gonna roast a pepper okay and these are tricks that chefs do to, to give flavor, okay? Um, so to roast a pepper, you can actually roast it in the oven or on a grill, but we want it blackened. We want it dark blackened, and then we're going to take it and we're going to put it in a paper bag, a plastic bag, and then we're going to take it and the skin will come right off and we'll get that sneaky roasted flavor, okay? Uh, and I'm all about the flavor business. Uh, I, I love to eat. I can't eat food without flavor, okay? So we have to do, chefs have tricks and, and, and different techniques they do to incorporate flavor in the food, okay? So, Judy, you want to talk about some of the ingredients? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, those peppers, actually, the yellow and the red have more nutrition than the green. And yet, green is the one that I remember growing up on on a regular basis. The skin that he's talking about is fiber, so uh, if you're going to blacken it, you may also want to eat it, too, if you want the fiber. Yeah, but yeah, what's really good about peppers is really the fact that they're high in vitamin C 
and they are in fact a good ingredient. The other thing to know is the seeds are not something I recommend you keep, all right? Grow them, take them, plant them, you grow a pepper plant, but uh, those kind of seeds, a lot of people that I know think that they eat the seed and it's gonna help them. It's not, it's just gonna constipate you. Uh, if you don't chew through a seed, right. you don't get what's inside. And that's the same I'm going to tell you about food all the time. <laughs> the other things that we're adding to this uh, is broccoli. Broccoli, high vitamin C. Yes, you lose some when you roast it the way the chef did, but it's an excellent fiber source too. A lot of other nutrients that are there. What else do we have right, there, right. chef? Is everybody, everybody like broccoli? Is that one of your favorite ones? Yeah. There's some of the other green vegetables that you enjoy. Beans. Greens. Yeah, asparagus. Oh, asparagus. Asparagus. This is asparagus season. I just wrote an article on asparagus. And the neat thing about asparagus, best way to store it, when you buy fresh asparagus, cut about an inch off the bottom and then put them in a glass of water and sit them in the refrigerator with something over it. Uh, they keep like fresh flowers very well. Uh, the other thing is, and this is something to know about the broccoli, as well as the asparagus. If you have a problem with your gut and fiber's an issue, take a, a little knife or a, a, something you pair with and take some of that fiber off, throw it away. Don't make your gut feel any worse than it has to. You're still getting fiber inside that. The other thing I tell people about broccoli all the time, chef, is they like to use it raw whenever you're going to use it in a dip. It, best way to do that, guys, is actually to take that broccoli, cut it in the sizes you want, steam it, or put it in the microwave for about a half a minute, a minute, and then immediately ice it because that doesn't cook the broccoli, but it makes it more edible for you. Right. The fiber is softened. It's still there, but it's soft fiber, which means it's not as hard on your gut uh, than whatever. So, and not to interrupt you, but uh -huh. in a chef's term, that's our blanching and shocking technique, which <laughs> which actually keeps the, the vegetable green. That's right. Okay, so when, and whenever in restaurants, hotels, whatever the case may be, we want the stuff green. Yeah, we want, we want it's it much better nice, green. green. Right. Uh, for my mom's birthday is in a couple of days, but she used to cook broccoli and, and oh yeah, green it's yellow. For, it's yellow. For like about <laughs> six, seven hours. <laughs> You know, and we throw we some ham hocks in there. We put it on the same time we put the like, meat in the oven. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And <laughs> what she didn't realize when you're doing that, you, all the all the nutrients are coming out of the beans. And that's the same thing with that asparagus. Asparagus should still be green. Don't overcook it. And guys, you can eat asparagus raw. Uh, that was something I never really thought about before because I've always steamed it or microwaved or whatever. The recipe I did for was oven frying it, which right, is great. Right, right, Roast right. it with a little bit of oil on it. Oh, it's great. Oh, delicious. Delicious. It's Throw it delicious. on the grill. Good stuff. Uh, Very all good. that stuff off spirits. Also, make sure you peel it. You can peel it. That's the uh, point. Because the woody part, it, there's a woody At part on end. it. Yeah, it's real woody. Yeah, chewy. take the woody part off. So you can peel that. Chefs peel it, and um, you know it becomes more viable to eat. You know? It's much better yeah, yeah, all the yeah. way around. Also, the another, other, another the chef other... thing is uh, the stocks, OK? Uh, if you're making, you want to make asparagus soup, save those stalks, pull That's those right. down, and you can use those for soup. Okay, same thing with broccoli or broccoli ends. And I'm seeing broccoli used in a lot of different ways. I've been cooking for a long time. Uh, they're shaving broccoli down uh, mm -hmm. and using the, the, the core and so forth. Um, but those broccoli stems can be used for a lot of things uh, and not just be thrown away. Well, so can onion peel. Uh, uh, onion peel. Wash your onions, save the peel, put it in. A, I always keep a little jar in my freezer and just drop those little ends and pieces in there. And then when you get enough, boil them down and make vegetable a vegetable broth. Vegetable broth, yeah. A vegetable yeah, broth. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, actually a place in California, a restaurant, they use all ends and, and, and cores and That's all right. kinds of stuff like that. And they'll roast it and they'll make some kind of fancy dressing. And, and they'll serve it for salads and, and sides. And they charge a lot for it. And charge a lot. <laughs> Stuff they we probably would throw away like 20, 30 years ago. Um, they pride themselves and people come because, uh, 
you know, uh, they're, they're abusing those things that we would throw away. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, all foods, uh, all parts in food is so high now. It is high. So we have to be creative on using all parts of the, all the, all the vegetables, all parts of our meat, any, anything we can use. We have to, just like our, our parents did, um, we have to be able to use those parts to, to cook with. You know, if you got an onion skin, why not use it and make broth, vegetable mm -hmm. broth? Okay. That'll save you on, on some of those uh, stock, uh, those bases and things like that, uh, where our bases, you know, our soup bases and so forth, they're not more, pretty much more than salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you save your broccoli and your ends from your onions and, and your carrots little pieces and like that. that are left on the table because nobody took them. <laughs> right. Roast That'll those work up too. And go. So good stuff, good stuff. And like I said, some of these recipes you might not have, uh, you might not have all the ingredients, but if you don't have A, substitute B. Okay, we always talk about that. So what I'm doing right now, and we're going to continue, is I'm just roasting these peppers. I'm getting a sneaky, Hold one up so they can see sneaky, what it looks sneaky. like. Sneaky, sneaky. Chef is burnt. Well, yeah, we no, are burning them. No, it's not. <laughs> we, we, we are burning them, okay? We want to get them black, and we want to get them roasted, okay? That nice, smoky, sneaky, I always like to talk about food as sneaky flavors, um, how... If something in food, everything tastes like this, everything is seasoned like this, it's going to taste like that. It's going to taste like that. So what we like to do is we have a little bit of seared, We have a hand up. A little bit of, uh, huh? You have a question. Question. Yes. Blistering. Um, blackening, blistering, any of those things like that. Um, but you, you want food to, to sort of like this. And we always talk about how salt, we always add salt. But if you do that, you're adding lemons and, and, and vinegars and, and we have fresh herbs and all those things like that. It stimulates you, it jumps up and down. Your, things on your tongue starts jumping up and down. I love Jamaican food. I love it. I love it to death because they have a little bit of savory. They have a little bit of hot. They, they, things are jumping around on your tongue, and that's where all the flavor is. Whenever you're eating some jerk, when you're eating curry and jerk and all that kind of stuff like that, it's just things jumping around on your tongue. Things that uh, spice. And, and if sweet. you're not into the curry and the jerk. Lemon and and plain old basil or oregano <laughs> work for those of us that are like me. All right, uh, you know, garlic is superb, superb, a great addition to anything. Right, right, right. Good stuff. So, and we talk about fresh herbs, okay? And I actually bought some herbs today. Okay, we got some basil, we have some oregano, we have some parsley, okay? Um, and very, very simple. I'm seeing more people than ever grow these things in their house, in a yard, uh, very, very simple. And we encourage you to grow these things because these are God's herbs. These are God's ways of seasoning things. Okay, God put these here for a reason. He yep. put basil and oregano and parsley and all those things like that. And these are unbelievable. Um, some of the things he's put in, in our... In, in our and our if you have now. any left and you don't know what you're going to do with it, chop it down, put it in ice cube trays, fill that ice cube holder with either oil or water and freeze it and then bump those ice cube trays out when they when you have ice cubes then you can add it to your soup or stew or flavor that's right that's actually right. you can add it to water too and i do that with lemon zest and orange zest too we have a question back there chef Oh, me? Uh, so just to its, uh, we're, we're calling it blanching and shocking. Yeah, Lightly blanching and shocking. So it's just a blanch and shock technique. A chef half do a, it minute, all the time. a minute, a minute. Yeah, most. just chef do it all the time. And when, when you do that, it's, it seals the greenness. It just seals that color in there. Um, it's so, still raw. It's still cooked. It's, right, right. But it's raw and it's easier to digest. It's easier to digest. Um, so when you go to a restaurant and then you come out, the broccoli's real green, the green beans. They, they blanched and shot it. So they blanched yeah. it and then uh, it assessed the green and then they'll probably saute it or, or whatever they do to it and then they'll serve it to you in it's nice green, bright color. Uh, you know, like I said, love my mom to death, but she always cooked broccoli for about a couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, we and, and the same thing goes if you're buying frozen. I really, all you need to do is heat it up because it's already been processed a little bit. Uh, just heat it up, uh, and that doesn't take long in a microwave, guys. And it, a steamer is wonderful, too. If you have a boiling water and you have a steamer yeah, pan yeah, over yeah, it, yeah. it's a good way to do it, and you don't lose as many nutrients. 
And those nutrients in those boiled vegetables, that's something else that can go in that broth that you're putting in your freezer because vitamin C boils out very quickly. Right, right. So this is almost ready to come off. And uh, <clears throat> so the salad, why that's, why that's uh, going. So I made a, a, a garbanzo, garbanzo bean salad, okay? Chickpeas, okay? Back in my day, we probably didn't eat chickpeas. We didn't understand it. Chickpeas, what in the world? But we found out the stuff is good for us. It's, it's healthy. It tastes good. Um, we don't have any protein in here. It's a chickpea. However, we could add chicken. We could add shrimp. We could add any protein we have. We could add it to it. We just didn't add any, add any today. Um, if you wanted to use tofu. I was going to say, if you're a tofu lover, then I would saute the tofu and, and crumbles and add yeah, it. That yeah. would be a good way yeah, to do so it. So tofu, um, diff just different ways. And like I said, I go to a million cookouts and everybody has the same thing. Mm -hmm. What happens if you just took a garbanzo bean salad? That'd be crazy. We looking at you like garbanzo beans, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, something different. Okay. Uh, you know, all over the world, food is different all over the world. Uh, why don't we just try some different things and different techniques and things like that? Uh, I know my daughter brought a uh, salad to a, to a cookout a couple months ago. So it was a picnic, mm -hmm. picnic type of thing. It was indoors. Mm -hmm. And people were like, wow, it was different. You know, it was some fresh spinach and, and uh, she had the feta cheese and things like that. So just different things, nothing wrong with it. So this salad here, our garbanzo bean salad. So I took the garbanzos, okay? I had, had it in the can, okay? And I rinsed them off thoroughly, okay? You wanna rinse those things off thoroughly. Um, but what they, what, what, this isn't in any of this stuff. The, the juice from the garbanzo beans can actually be used to make icing, believe it or not. It can be used to make, uh, replace egg yolks or yeah, eggs too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's useful. There's, there's a way it can be used if you want to keep it. But if you don't want to keep it, throw it away. Yeah. It's just calories and it's, you end up with a high protein bean. Right, right. So I, uh, I, I rinsed those beans off. And then what I did was I tossed them in some olive oil. Uh, and I roasted them, okay? Once again, that roasting is it more flavor. I roasted it, I cooled it off, okay? Because whenever you're cooking things, hot food hot, cold food cold. I've been, I've been doing this for a long time, and I never forgot that, never forgot that. Keep hot foods hot, keep cold foods cold. Always hot food hot, cold food cold. And you'll eliminate a lot of bacterial issues as far as time, temperature, and safety, okay? So I have this on ice, okay? Um, and we're, we're having that uh, cook. Now, to our garbanzo bean salad, you can make your own dressing, which is very, very simple. I'm a lover of balsamic. Um, I love balsamic, so I'm going to close this up. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I took some olive oil, some uh, balsamic, I took some mustard, and uh, vinegar, and I made my own dressing, okay? And you can actually Google these things, and I have the recipe. But once you start making your own dressing, you'll realize, wow, how simple it is. And why am I buying it? Because it is so simple. Mm -hmm. And it, it, so I understand what goes in it. Okay, when I look on the back of that label, a bottle again, it's going to scare you once again. So, mm -hmm. but I know. Yeah, if you can't pronounce one of the ingredients, don't buy the ingredient. Right, right. Don't so buy it. I, I mean, I know what's in there. There's too much garbage in our food these days. That's right. That's right. And we talked about that uh, on the way over here how. Uh, you know, you're looking at labels and it's scary what you're putting in here and why are you doing it and all mm -hmm. this stuff like that. And we had a we had an hour conversation even before we got here about mm -hmm. how uh, you know just looking at labels, think about what you eat. You know? Yeah. And also read labels. Love you guys to death. Think about what you're feeding your kids to, which is real important to me. Okay. Um, think about things that we're putting our kids' bodies and we're sending them out to try and learn all kind of stuff that not, is not conducive to learning. So think about that. That's that's one of the most important things uh, as, I'm, as I take this journey is is just to uh, think about things we're putting in our kids' bodies. To, 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 they want to go out here and we want to be able to think as most effectively as possible. And we want to give them food to be able to, uh, to, to, to foster that. Okay. So the, we got the we got the pet we got the uh, garbanzo beans. Uh, 
And we actually, like I said, we roasted some broccoli back there. We took some olive oil and garlic, um, and we roasted that off. Also, a couple other things real quick. Okay, I had some shallots. You guys worked with shallots before? Shallots perfect, like an onion, perfect, perfect. garlicky type of thing. It has its own flavor. Uh, it's in the onion family. Um, they'll use this a lot of French cooking, shallot. It's a little bit more expensive than an onion, but the flavor is... is except, the, except I buy them all the time because of the right size to use one shallot for most recipes. So I'm not wasting a lot true. of onion. That's true. And one thing I'll note right here. Mm -hmm. Don't store your onions or your shallots next to your potatoes. It causes your potatoes to sprout. Uh, keep them on a separate shelf. Keep them away. A lot of us store everything in a nice basket or in one place or in a plastic bag. You bring home those potatoes in a plastic bag, break open that, uh, that plastic bag. Let the potatoes have air, nowhere near an onion or shallot or garlic. All of those give out something that can cause those potatoes to sprout. And by the way, sprouted potatoes, you can remove the sprout and eat the potato. But once you cut that sprout out, you use the potato. You don't cut it out until you're ready to use it. And if it's green, if the tomato, if the potato is green, never eat the green. Green is solanin. It's poisonous. Uh, you know, you can cut around, cut it out. But you got to use the potato right away. And by the way, potatoes shouldn't go in the refrigerator. They should be kept at room temperature until Absolutely. they're cooked. And once they're cooked, they go in the refrigerator. Right, right, right. And. I Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So another thing about potatoes, as far as the chef's is speaking, is once you put something in a refrigerator, moisture comes off on them. Okay. That's so right. if you're trying to make French fries or anything moist, it's not going to crisp up as much. Because the moisture from the refrigerator goes inside the potatoes. Have you been a, you've been seeing Kennywood, right? Yeah. And and uh, Dirty O's down down in the strip. Yeah. How they always had the potatoes outside of the refrigerator. Never That's put them right. in That's because right. once you put them in a refrigerator, moisture comes out of the refrigerator and actually goes into. Potatoes. But once they're cooked, they need to go in the refrigerator. Absolutely. Once and moisture, once you cut anything out of it, it needs to be refrigerated. That's right. That's right. So in. And she used to work for the health department. She didn't tell you that, did she? Uh -huh. But uh, so once anything is cut, it has to go in the refrigerator. Yeah. Okay, so if, if I have a piece of garlic, it can stay outside. But once I put my knife in there, it's on a time clock. Okay, my onion it doesn't have to be refrigerated. But once I put my knife in there, it's, got, it's, on, a, it's on a clock. Fruit. Another one's fruit. Uh, cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon. Any of those things, once that knife goes inside, it's on the clock. But while you're talking about that cantaloupe, get yourself a brush and brush it off. Don't just run it under cold running water. Where those things grow is not the way to, to eat. And once you cut through one, if it hasn't been washed, you have cross-contaminated the knife so that every piece now has that potential. Uh, but again, you don't need to wash the cantaloupe right away, but I do. As soon as I bring it home, That's I wash thing. the cantaloupe, I wash the watermelon, but I leave it at room temperature until what the chef said. Once it's cut, it's refrigerated. It's on the clock. It's on the clock. I, you still had your hand up. We haven't answered your question. Yeah, yeah. And you wonder, you, when you go see watermelon at Giant Eagle, how when it's cut, it's... it's Wrapped up, uh, it's I, in the I, I don't buy cut. I don't buy cut melon. Cut I used to work for Giant Eagle. Okay, <laughs> so I don't buy cut melon. I don't. I, I wash lemons as soon as I bring them home. I wash apples. Why? Because my husband never washes anything, right? And you think about it. People pick up lemons. They smell them. They go like this. That says nothing about the fact it's been laying on the ground and a bird did something right before. Wash it, let it dry out, leave it at room temperature. Once it's cut, then it's back to the refrigerator kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I always say using a lemon, and I hate this in restaurants, it's sort of like me coming along and 
dipping my finger in and stirring your iced tea, you just dip that lemon in. Think and about that. Sort of scary. Uh, doesn't mean I won't drink the water if the lemon's in it. It simply says I don't, I ask for the lemon on the side. I can squeeze it then. Now, I still had that potential that when they washed, they didn't wash the lemon and they cross contaminated. Got to take some risk in life. <laughs> <laughs> but just think about your own scenario when you shop. Yeah. What she's saying is so, so true. Show so, them so your true. bag because that's important. Okay, so what I did was, I uh, like I said, I roasted these, I blistered them, and I got the black part off. Okay, the, 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 and it's what it's, the, the gave is a smoky flavor a smoky type of flavor um and like i said we're in the flavor business so we want a smoky sneaky type of flavor so what i'm gonna do is we're gonna tray some uh plate some of these uh garbanzo bean salads up we're gonna put some parmesan uh broccoli on it and we're also gonna put some roasted red peppers on top so we've got a lot of different flavors uh going on here uh, and hopefully you enjoy it and also the thing about fresh herbs okay so it makes oh, yeah uh, parsley and basil and oregano it just adds a freshness in your mouth like wow now if you have fresh. dried it's okay to use dry Absolutely. right but this is spring it's time to spring clean your pantry if you have parsley and basil that's three to four years old take it out rub it between your fingers if it doesn't smell like parsley or then feed the plants with it because it's <laughs> not giving you the flavor you want if it's stored properly, you got two to three years in the in a good cold pantry, but not over your range, not exposed to light or heat. No, you don't have to refrigerate, but that's the way to go. Right, right. So and chives, we haven't talked about chives. That's no, something no, let's else. Talk about chives. Grows beautifully, and that is a good onion replacement. But you can get them dried. You can have them ready to go, uh, just as the chef said. It, you don't need to to grow them. I prefer the fresh. Uh, I really do. And, and not only that, so the next time you get herbs, you'll see ah. how simple it is to, to grow your own. But look, when you go buy them, they're, they, for three, you got four sticks of, four uh, ribs of par, uh, rosemary, they're charging like two, three dollars. Yeah. Very, very expensive. So grow it yourself. It'll save you a lot of now, money. Now, rosemary, let me tell you about rosemary. Every year, Giant Eagle will sell this thing that looks like a little Christmas tree. That's rosemary. I buy it then. Why? Because I got this little Christmas tree in my condo ready to go, and I can chop it off and have fresh rosemary And after I'm done pretending it's a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he mentioned garbanzo beans or chickpeas. I want to bring up one nutrient you may not have thought of, and that's magnesium. Magnesium is one of the nutrients that helps you sleep. Magnesium is something that a lot of us are missing because we're not eating foods that have it. It's a mineral. It doesn't go away like vitamin C or vitamin B that go with heat and light and air. Uh, but it is something to think about. Uh, eating beans, you're getting magnesium. And it's, it, again, the they're out there selling you magnesium supplements. You may get it by eating your garbanzo beans. Yeah. Anybody have a hard time for sleeping? I know I do. I'm, I'm raising my hand here. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. Like, uh, Well, don't watch television before. Yeah. Give yourself at least two hours before you go to sleep uh, watching with your eyes being busy. Uh, that's yeah. the problem. And I think that is true. However, I think, honestly, we just got so much going on in our life. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and when you lay down and you stop, you're thinking about all the things you got to do, you, you need to do, and you should have did. You're and, right. And, I'm, uh, I'm so. making tomorrow's demo. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so we have some garbanzo bean salad, okay? And we would like for you to come up and try some. Well, we got to add the stuff first. Um, we're going to put it on top. Okay. All so right. So we're going to put right. it on top. So come on up. Uh, grab a, we'll, we'll put a in little, a bowl. There's a spoon, a fork, a little bowl, get it, a napkin, and we will serve you. Yes. Salad. You want to put that in here? Uh, yeah. So they'll grab a bowl? Yeah, grab yourself a bowl. I'll get you a bowl. Yeah. Got it? 
So also, we, I had some bananas left over from some. You're welcome to take a couple. Yeah, the bananas are just there. There's nothing special about the bananas. But they would make a great smoothie. Here you go. I want to learn how to make some kale salad. Uh -huh. I, I had it at a, 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 a Kale salad is very so easy to make. Good. Yeah, it's very easy to make. You know, kale has taken over where spinach used to. Yep, that's and what I think. It's a better, it's better for you. Uh, it actually is. Kale is much higher in nutrients, and it's, it's a good. If you like the flavor, it's great raw. The other thing is, when you bring it home, don't wash it until you're ready to use it. Uh, don't. Leave it in the plastic bag or whatever, because once you wash it, you've changed the way it reacts. So wash it before you're ready to use it. Yeah, back in our day, kale was only cooked for greens. That was it. Got it? Shallot. Hmm? Shallots are great. I buy them all the time because it's just the right size for my husband and I. And I don't have any weight. They come smaller than that. And they come larger. Those are those little ones that be like this? Uh, yeah. Okay. They and come I got a several inner, different ways. And their shape is different. And I got glasses back there. There are, there are different kinds, so it shouldn't say salad. Okay. All righty. Tell me if you want more. You we have plenty. We're ready. Oh, I was here. Here you go. Here you go. Let me put the broccoli on. Yeah, you don't want to miss the broccoli. That adds extra flavor. I'm going to make a meal. Oh, enjoy. That's exactly what you got there, too, with the protein. Good brunch. Do you know what is also healthy, but it's not good? Roast cauliflower. Yeah. Oh, delicious. Delicious. Oh, I agree. Church Blue Works on Liberty Avenue. Oh, yeah. And they, they have me to roast it in the cauliflower. Oh, yeah. I, I, roast, I roast my cauliflower all the time. I like it cold, too. Yes, I roast it and then put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on it. It's got it. some flavor? Flavor? Um, they roast yes, sir. It. They substitute uh, cauliflower for the mashed potatoes. Well, you can also use cauliflower as to make a crust. And yes, for pizza, uh, oh, okay, I got you, got you, got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're gonna do that. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, uh, it's on the, it's kale? on the recipe. It's mangoes, peaches. They're frozen, frozen fruit, and then it, it includes lemon juice and yogurt. Use maple syrup. All right, while we're eating this, any questions for us while we transition into the smoothies? Yeah, any we'll questions try to for us? The any questions? Go ahead. Oh, is it uh, what the garbanzo beans? Um, it depends on your medication, and your doc, your doctor should be able, your doctor or nurse should be able to tell you if there are medications you're on, you can't have it. That's the big issue. The chef and I can't answer that one without knowing more about it. Yes. Yeah. But you can yes. leave tomatoes out of it. There's tomatoes in there. So it's like, yeah, once again, it's... take tomatoes out of it. So if, if you're told you can't have tomatoes, yeah, you don't eat it on dialysis. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing about, that's the thing about medication. There are things you have to avoid. And those are very important, but again, even after you're off the medication, you may not be able to eat it for a while because it may stay in your body for a few weeks. So check with your doctor. Uh, check, always check. Uh, yeah. Your pharmacist. Your pharmacist should be able to. Do it. And we always say, uh, you know, we never tell you not to do what your doctor yeah. does. So follow doctor's instructions. The things we do will help you. But always follow doctor's instructions. Always. Case in point, I'm a diabetic. When I first got diabetes, I said, man, I ain't taking that shot. I ain't taking no shots. I ain't doing none of that. Okay? And I paid for it. Okay? Uh, he said, you didn't. I said, no, I'm not taking these. He said, well, yeah, you are. And he was right. 
because, because if I don't take it, because it was type one diabetes. It was it was type one diabetes. And type one diabetes is very different than type two. That's right. Two that's right. That's right. The type two diabetes, we can honestly work with a person so that they don't have to that's take right. medication. That's right. My father was a type two diabetes person, and he died without ever having. To oh, the mic. The mic. The mic. The mic. Whoops. He died without having to take medications because he had a daughter who was a dietitian and didn't let him. But my dad was a musician, which meant he drank like a fish. Uh, so I didn't know what he was eating when he was out working. Yeah. All right. Uh, whatever it was, I had to control right, at home. Right, right. Yeah. Like so type, then what she was saying was type one, the pancreas does not work at all. That's right. Okay. You're born Shut that down. way. Uh, type two is to control with diet, exercise, those type of things. So. Me being a type one and not knowing any better, I said, man, I, I'm not taking a shot. I'm not taking these. Like, well, yeah, you are. And boy, were they right. Because if I didn't, my, my, my shirt would go sky high. And unfortunately, once it went down, they couldn't rebuild it. Right, right. That's right. the difference between type one and type two. Type two, we can control and prevent some of the That's right. injury. That's right. And you're seeing even more kids nowadays. Come on, man. You're seeing more kids with diabetes. That's the scary part. You're seeing more kids. <laughs> You're seeing more kids than that with diabetes and so forth. Help yourself. Um, one of the things I did do with this was I roasted the garlic. It's called garlic confit. I put the whole garlic in the oven and I let it Good slowly stuff. cook for about an hour. Okay, and then the oil from the from the oil the oil from the um, from the garlic olive oil it gets nice and, and flavorful and you can use that to flavor and things like it's called. A, garlic confit okay which means it's cooked slowly in oil and that flavor from the garlic goes inside the oil you can actually use that does that taste okay 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 yeah go ahead another thing i like hot okay that's me okay i so don't I, like I hot a, she doesn't <laughs> i put a dash of uh, uh uh red pepper flakes if you like hot you can put some more in there okay so but whenever you're cooking for someone you got to be it in the kind of the middle type help of ground. Yourself. Help um, yourself. You know, it has Take to be in the middle want. type of ground. Um, and so. And tomato, no. But I'm going to do this. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. They call it a Mediterranean salad. Uh huh. And they have the gabanza beans, black beans. We have plenty if you like more. That's great. Uh, wow. What's the dressing? Uh, you want some? Uh, we he did. It's on here. It's, it's on there. It's a balsamic. Here, it's balsamic vinegar oil, and you can use as much as you want for flavor. I want to bring something up about garlic because we've talked a lot about it. I love to roast garlic. Okay, all you do is take that garlic, cut the top off, put it in a little foil bag, put it in the oven, roast it. Doesn't take long. It you can pop those little kernels out and eat them, smear them on your bread. Keep that in your refrigerator. What I do is once I roast it, put it in a glass jar with a lid, put it in my refrigerator, and I have garlic anytime I want it. Garlic is better if it's been chopped than if it's been whole. It's better if it's cooked rather than raw. If you are a raw garlic lover, chop it, but let the air hit it. That brings more nutrition out of it. Awesome stuff. You guys, any garlic fans in the house? <laughs> that's, that's, that was medicine for our, our, our forefathers. It garlic. was. It was garlic. <laughs> garlic is one of the original, original medicines and still has the, the, it still is something to follow through on, raw or cooked. It's a good good thing to have but as the chef said once you cut into it it needs to be refrigerated uh, the other thing I'll bring up I don't think I brought it up I'm in favor of buying glass canning jars that's what I use to store things in I try not to store things in plastic and a glass canning jar can also be put in the microwave therefore Something that I'm going to freeze, I can freeze in that glass jar, and then my husband can heat it up and have it another day. Uh, it's much better. And you say, oh, Judy, I have jelly jars. Don't trust jelly jars, guys. If you want to use them in your refrigerator, fine. But don't try them in the microwave. 
that may not be safe. Yeah, yeah. What do we have here? Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Let's transition over. Any questions? Uh -huh. Uh, something you might want to make at home. If you want more, we have more. Come on up. And we were talking about, uh, can I use another bean or so? Absolutely, you can. You can use yeah. another bean or whatever the case may be that you wanted to do. But we're going to transition over to smoothies, okay? Anybody a smoothie lover? Yeah, yeah. Good, what, good. What's, uh, uh, Help yourself. What are some of the smoothies you like to make uh, faster? Beets? Beets? A uh, great way to get great, nutrients in, in, your, in your body, smoothies. You're seeing them more than ever. Um, you're seeing different smoothies. Chef, uh, Pastor City uses beets. You're seeing beets. You're seeing kale. You're seeing spinach. You're seeing all kinds of things in there that probably within the last 30, 40 years wasn't as popular. You're seeing all these different things, different ways to get nutrients in your body, smoothies, okay? Um, this one we have today is a kale smoothie. Uh, it has the kale, uh, kale greens. It has peaches. It has uh, mangoes. Uh, it has uh, yogurt. Uh, all those things like that. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, smoothies. They're, they're they're the thing that everybody. But and we will always talk tell kids this this isn't a milkshake. Yeah. Okay, so it's not supposed to be a sweet. And it's not going to be real sweet. It's but you can make it sweeter if you want mm -hmm. it, but right. it's not going to be real sweet. It's not supposed to be a milkshake. There's a difference between a smoothie and a milkshake, okay? Uh, and we did this last week with kids at another group I'm working with, and they liked it, um, but they realized it wasn't, it wasn't a milkshake. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. True. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. 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 You know, a quick story real quick, Judy. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. When I first became diabetic, they said, well, you can have a little bit of fruit and so forth. Okay. So I ate like a quarter of a watermelon. Ah. Okay, not realizing that that's just fructose. sugar is it's sugar, called fructose. and my sugar went up to like a thousand. Okay, so you do have to be careful with some of these fruits uh, and, and so forth because they do they will spike your blood sugar tremendously. Water cranberries are the only thing that won't because you, if you don't have sugar, you don't eat a cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah. So. Let, uh, let me talk a little bit about this smoothie thing. One of the things you need to be aware of with smoothies is I recommend it to a lot of the people I work with who have problems with constipation. And the problem is when you choose something, okay, think about it. How many times do you chew and what have you swallowed? Sometimes you're chewing and swallowing very fast and guess what? If you don't chew it in your mouth, it comes out the other end in the same form. <laughs> That's the problem. So if you're not a chewer or if you have problems with your gut, you're better off blending it because the fiber is still there, but it's in small pieces. It takes 20 minutes from the time food hits your mouth till your brain says you've eaten. So there's a good reason to take time to talk to people put your fork down, drink something, chew. Uh, that's that's, right. that's healthful eating. That's, how, that's right. smart that's eating. Right. And right. let's talk about that great, great nutrient there. Right, right. So I have some ginger. In, in this particular recipe, I'm going to take the skin off the ginger. I'm going to take the peel off. The, the, the best way chef does is with a spoon. Okay, You can just take it and scrape it straight off. And the ginger, ginger goes back. It's very, very good for you, okay? Uh, it has a lot of flavor, uh, and it is good for you, okay? And it's it'll, it'll be one of the star ingredients in this actual particular smoothie, the ginger, okay? And I keep mine in my freezer. I buy the ginger root and put it in the freezer, and you say, oh, Judy, you can buy ginger powder. That's not the same. It's not the same, right, Chef? Not at all, not at all. You really want the fresh ginger, but it can go in your freezer, pull it out, do what he's doing. You don't have to thaw it. 
and then just scrape it in. It lasts uh, a good three months in your freezer without any trouble. That's right. So I got a nice piece of ginger, and it wasn't it, the price wasn't actually that bad, honestly, for what I had here. Yeah. Well, and, and the chef and I did a program a few weeks ago where we had somebody who sat to the side because she was nauseous. And she said, do you have any ginger? We gave her some ginger, and guess what? She wasn't nauseous anymore. That's one of the things ginger is known to do for some people. And again, I say the word some, because right, right. it depends on you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good idea. Good idea. And you know, there are a lot of things you can add to your water to make your water better, and a piece of ginger is one of them, along with the, that lemon. Uh, good idea. You have <laughs> yeah. Well, and you can also buy ginger that has been dried and sugared, and that's another alternative. You can buy it. It's going to give you more calories than this is going to, but I keep some of those ginger nuggets there, and every so often I just grab one. It's a great snack. Okay, our, our smoothie we're using a lot of different ingredients. And the recipe is there for you. Know that it, 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 what the chef has included is, again, kale. You've used frozen mangoes, already chopped, ready to go, right? right? right. Is there and any mango uh, fans in the house? Mangoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good, they're good. Uh, a little bit of ginger uses lemon juice, real lemon. And he uses yogurt. Let me talk a little bit about yogurt. We're using regular yogurt. It's just plain yogurt, okay? I like Greek yogurt. The reason I like Greek yogurt is because they take regular yogurt, they strain it, throw away or get rid of what comes off, which is some of the sugar and water. What you end up with with Greek yogurt is a thicker yogurt with less sugar, higher protein. It makes a great alternative for those of us that are vegetarian or vegan. Uh, no, can't do vegan because it's from an animal. But uh, yogurt is something that makes a great ingredient in this because it's added protein to it. That's right. That's and right. nothing else in his ingredients have added protein to it. And, and, and by the way, these are one of some of the biggest lemons I've ever seen in my ah. life. <laughs> and of course, he washed the lemon first night. Of course, he did. So we're going to get the juice out of there. Lemons. Now, one of the things you could do if you were a, one, a person that liked to repurpose food is wash the lemon, grate off the rind, put the rind in those ice cubes with a little bit of water, and you have something you can drop into things later, or you can use it. Uh, yeah, you have your hand up. You can make it as thin and as thick as you want. Exactly. Okay? And this calls for water and ice, and if you don't like it thick, you can make it thinner, yes. All you've done is diluted the nutrition. You get more nutrition from the thicker one. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So um, once you add more water and ice. Right, 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 right. Um, you added almond milk to this too, just right? Just a dash of almond milk. I had a dash of almond milk. You guys uh, use a lot of almond milk or do you use, what do you guys use at home? You like almond milk? Prefer almond milk? Do you prefer almond milk? Does regular milk make you sick or... Okay. okay. All right. Well, and you know, let me let me give you a little lesson on lactose because that's important, especially if you have grandchildren. Your body can automatically make lactase, which is an enzyme. 
that's in your gut. Unless you're allergic, unless it's a genetic issue, all of us can digest milk. And that's why moms breastfeed babies and then send them off to the next step. Unfortunately, today, they're, taking, they're not putting them in dairy milk, which means the lactase is no longer being produced by the infant's gut. And that infant then ends up having problems as soon as they drink a milkshake or eat ice cream because they've killed the lactase. That's what you and I have done. We stop drinking. I don't drink a glass of milk. I can't tell you the last time. I mean, I'm going to put something on my cereal. I'm going to put something in right. my coffee. But you need to keep your gut moving with lactase. And, you know, there is lactase-free milks. There are pills you can take that produce it. But I'm telling you, it's their natural. If you have children and grandchildren, they should go directly to dairy products until that child gets a little older. You do get lactose-free when you eat yogurt and whenever you have cheese. So there are other ways you can do it. You can retrain the gut. That's it. Yeah. She used to work for dairy council. By the way. <laughs> I used to work for the dairy industry. Yes, I have also. I was the WIC nutritionist first, too. So, I, you know, when it comes down to did I do the job, yes, I did. <laughs> so, yeah, so she knows what she's talking about. But, um. So yeah, hopefully, like I said, today is informative. It opens your eyes to different things. Um, maybe just some different ways to, to do things. Um, maybe just some different way to try things. You know? And there's a lot of resources in, on online now. Uh, like when we were coming up, online wasn't, there was a few things online, but That's now right. everything is online. So you can always Google something. You can always YouTube things. You can always, um, there's a lot of resources out there to, to help you. And I've you given you some of them. Yep, and healthier ways to do things, which, you know, to be completely honest, that is why we're here. You know, we the other thing is, and, and it's really important, everybody in this room has a different personal need, all right? It doesn't matter that it's your brother, sister, wife, whatever. It doesn't matter. Every one of us is different. And I'll give the best example of my husband's aunt. My husband had Aunt Mary, who lived with us for many years. Aunt Mary died at 103. Aunt Mary had perfect blood pressure when she died at 103. I look at salt and my blood pressure goes up. I came from a family that diabetes and, and I, I picked the wrong family to get born into, okay? But my husband has the same genes Aunt Mary has. I'll tell you the story. Aunt Mary came to my house for New Year's Day and I served sauerkraut. She salted the sauerkraut. I could not eat the meal because I'm looking at this thinking, oh, my God, you know what? Just watching her salt it. My husband salts everything. Why? Because Judy doesn't add salt. I add salt for flavor at the end right. to give you the right. taste. Right. And if those of you that are out there buying pink Himalayan, use it for a lamp. Don't buy it. It's not <laughs> worth the money. Yeah, all these special salts they're having are useless dollars. If you're going to use salt, use salt. The other thing to know is years ago, they iodized salt so that you and I wouldn't have thyroid problems. Now that we're not using salt, don't be surprised if your doctor asks you about iodine and looks at your thyroid because we're cutting back on sodium. Yeah, we're yeah. cutting back on it. But that doesn't mean you have to give it up. It means know what your doctor tells you and follow it that way. And, and don't spend your money on special products. It's not worth it. <laughs> Any of you guys use those special salts? What, what do you use? What do you use? I do too. I, that's what I buy. I buy sea salt or, right. yeah, or, and I grind it myself right. at the end for flavor. You're on target. Right, right. Same the other thing, the other thing to know, Chef, and think about it. You use a recipe, and it tells you to put in how much salt. Then you boil that recipe down. That salt has now increased by how much. You're better off waiting to the end, tasting it, or have somebody else taste it, and the flavor is there. Right. So know that's, that that's one there. of the things that flavor. chefs do is reduction. To, to get flavor, we reduce it. So That's it's right. It's like this. 
and we cook it down to here, everything contracts, all the flavors contract. So what we're saying is to add the salt last. Yeah. A lot of times when students are cooking, they have a pot of soup like this, okay, and they season it and it yeah. tastes good. Then they reduce it down to here. Well, now it's salty yeah. because all the flavors contract it. That's right. So those, those the salt you want to add towards the end of the cooking. And also, um, whenever you're using fresh herbs, you want to add yeah. those towards the end of add cooking. The end. Dried herbs, you can you do it in the, in in the, the, in the beginning. beginning. However, uh, fresh herbs, that fresh, flavorful, parsley wakes up in your mouth. You want to add that towards the end. And even the dried herbs, I add a little bit at the end. If yeah. I, that's what yeah. I'm using. The other thing we didn't talk about, we have up here, uh, is maple maple mm -hmm. syrup yes. and honey. These still provide the same calories, okay? But it's an intense flavor, so you can get away with using less. So it's not that they're lower in calories, it's the fact that you can get away with using less. And what we've used in this is a little bit of the maple syrup so it's not as sweet as you may like it, and you might have to add something. But know that, that reducing your sugar or reducing your salt is part of the dietary guidelines these days. And I've given you some nutrition information on that. The idea being that we need to include more fruits, vegetables, and grains in our meals and use the protein in things like these beans. Use that protein in that cheese. Yes, I work for the Dairy Council. I uh, <laughs> think in terms, too, of how much and how often. Uh, that's Nutrition has changed dramatically, even as a registered dietitian that's been educated in it. Uh, staying current is hard. And one of the things the chef and I do a lot is change up what we're doing so that we're giving you the most nutrition for the least cost. And That's right. for the best value nutritionally. Great, great. I was looking for the vanilla extract. I don't see it. it. Yeah, so it's here somewhere. But, oh, oh it's right in front of me. Jesus. <laughs> so a little bit of vanilla extract. Okay, so flavor. Extracts. Um, always uh, the pure tastes better. It, oh, yeah. it, it costs more, uh, but it, it has a, a more of a deeper, intense flavor. So you're going to spend a little bit more for this, but it is actually worth actually, it. Actually, you can take a vanilla beef. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good way to go. The other thing about vanilla, I'll tell you, strawberries are coming in season. I use vanilla extract, not sugar, on my strawberry. Doesn't add any calories, guys. Cost me a little bit more money because I'm using vanilla extract, but I it gives your strawberries a great flavor. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah. So it depends on, the, like I was, I think I was saying earlier that that uh, if the if the fruit is already sweet, you don't have to add anything to it. Okay. So it depends on how sweet the fruit is, the frozen fruits. Some are a little bit sweeter than others. If it's not as sweet, then maybe you want to add a little bit of your uh, honey or maple syrup or so forth uh, to give it just a dash of sweetness. Because once again, this isn't a milkshake, like I told the students. Uh, it's it's supposed to be it's meant to be a soothing type of thing. That I'll smooth and so forth and so on. And okay. did I say that if you cut back on salt, you cut back on sugar? Within three weeks, stuff starts tasting very sweet. No, that's very true. Very salty. Your taste. If you ever want to try something someday, put a jelly belly in your mouth. Okay? A jelly <laughs> Close your nose and start chewing. Open up your nose. What you will find is if your nose is closed, it doesn't taste sweet. It suddenly tastes sweet as soon as you open up your nose and the partner with your mouth. Absolutely. And we sometimes forget that. So if you have dentures, if you have mouth problems, you may be missing some taste. We need to talk yeah, about Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why having the herbs and spices is very useful. Good stuff, good stuff. One last thing before we move on is one of the things I do with the students is I tell them to hold their nose. And then I have sugar and salt, and I have them taste it, and they can't taste it. They can't taste which one's sugar, which one's salt, 
until they open her nose up because right. think about when you get a cold, okay? I can't smell yeah. anything. I can't taste anything. I want everything to the extreme. It's because your nose is clogged up and it's all connected. Your nose and your taste buds are connected, which is pretty interesting stuff. So try that next time, you know? I know when I'm sick, I want something salty. I want something sweet. I want something to the extreme because I can't, I just can't taste anything. And the reason why I can't taste anything is because my nose is, is, is clogged up. Which is pretty interesting stuff. Go ahead, sir. So don't have a chef that has a cold. I know, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Gluten free. Gluten is an, an amino acid that's part of the protein. And some people have problems digesting it, and it ends up needing to be gluten-free. Gluten-free, for the most part, has become, though, unfortunately, yes. a, a way to get us to buy foods that aren't oh. necessary. Yes. If you have celiac disease, if your doctor has said you're gluten-sensitive, then you need to avoid wheat, rye, and barley. And if you really need gluten-free, it's as much as the chef and I not not using the ingredient and picking it out. In other words, if you had bread in your salad and I picked it out, you would still have gluten on your salad. That's how sensitive gluten-free people right, are. Right, right. You're starting to see that a lot. Uh, well, a lot of people are gluten-free. they've come out with a whole line of products that are gluten-free. There's Take a look at the ingredients. They have more ingredients than anybody needs. They are, to me, a waste of money. If you like it, Enjoy it, but it's not necessary unless you have celiac disease or your doctor says you're allergic to wheat, rye, or barley. And by the way, wheat is a separate allergy, too. There are people who are allergic to wheat. And when you're allergic to something, it's even the smell, it's even the taste. Uh, and that's how serious it is. And that's where the dietitian comes in to try to tell you how to cook it. All righty. How are we doing? I think we're about ready. Um... So we have a little bit of the, a lot of freshness, a lot of ginger, a lot of, a lot of going, a lot going on, a lot of good stuff going on. We're gonna come up and try some of that. All right. Um, paper towel. And uh, like I said, if you like it more sweet at home, you just add more honey, more, more. We've uh, got maple honey and, and maple syrup if you're really into it. We this is not ultra sweet. We'll tell you right now, but it's full of kale and it's full of nutrition. And the yogurt in there is giving you protein. So you're getting a smoothie that, in fact, is protein. Now, if you're allergic to milk, guys, sorry, but we have yogurt in there. Uh, right. Sorry about that. But uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you're allergic at home, just put some ice in it. Uh, ice. Yep, yep, yep. We can't take those out. <laughs> okay, come on. You ready? And there's more of the salad if you're if you're really into it. We we're glad to give it to you. Taste the kale. You want some honey? You can put some more honey in there. You absolutely can. That's the honey. Let me let me get you a. You have a spoon. Yeah. Okay. That's this is the maple syrup. This is the honey. What do you want? Oh, honey. You want that? Okay. That's the honey. Me and the gel were talking about digestive, but I'm like kind of a nutritionist, but I'll be back to post like Google about Need more honey in it? A little bit more sweet? For the digestive. Nothing wrong with that. Two cups of pineapple, one cup of pineapple, and you're good. Yeah, well, it will because of all that fiber. Four different fiber. Yeah, yeah. All right. What is that? Uh, man, uh, Ginger. This 
There's some more. There's some more sweetener if you like. Once again, it's not a milkshake. How's the how's the garbanzo one? Pretty good. Okay. 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 I know that's right. That's what you need to say. You tell everybody. It's a good way to go. It really is. So you want a little sweet, huh? Sean said it tastes like gave me so much stuff today. I didn't even know. Uh, I, I, I'm praying you. I'm praying we did. It's a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. And not only that, they add it in several different forms. So sugar may not be listed first, but there's three different kinds of sugar in there. I could have dropped some bananas in there. I could have. Let's, uh, let's, let's give chef let's give chef keith a hand and and judy dot tester can we answer any questions any questions uh anything you want to know about anything you want us to do in the future anything about anything yeah. you know this isn't just this our show um we're actually here for you so if there's anything you want to ask us if there's anything you want us to do in the future if there's a specific topic you want us to talk about i know you talked about dialysis Going to talk about diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever the case and may we be. Have a, we have a team member who talks about the whole idea of food making you happy. Yes, so we, we're actually blessed to have an, another team member. She's studying uh, to be a physician over at the University of Pittsburgh, and that's in her studies are, are, are dealing with those topics. So if there's anything you want to us to talk about in the future, um, if there's anything you want to ask us now, we're, we're, right. we're, we're, that's why we're here. We're here. That's huge. that's huge. That is huge. I'm gonna be honest. I'm talk personal, okay? So I used to just grab things and and if it said maybe low calorie or whatever, I didn't even really look at it. But if it says uh, half the fat or whatever, I grabbed it, okay? Not meaning it said half the fat, half the fat or what or half the salt or what. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Uh, well, actually, a story. Um, soup, okay? Soup is loaded with sodium. Okay, just because it says half the amount of sodium 
That does not necessarily mean it's good for you. It's just half the amount that was already crazy. <laughs> so, then you boil it down, it gets worse. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll talk more about that in detail, but yeah, reading labels are huge. Yeah. That's it's huge. Um and I think we have to read labels. We have to know what's going on in our body. We we have to take note. Even if it takes a couple extra seconds, read the label. And and also That's right. And right now, those artificial sweeteners that are out there, that's a whole program in itself. My personal feeling is Trivia or Splenda, which is naturally occurring, is okay. But these other ones, all it does is pull you into saying, hey, I didn't have sugar, so I can eat a double serving of ice cream. Uh uh, that's not the way it works. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, love you guys to death. And, uh, and uh, you know, here for you guys, but I think my journey is our kids. I think that our kids need to have this information moving forward um, to, to curb some of this generational, to curb some of this generational, uh, generational health issues, to curb some of this generational stuff that we've been passed down. I, I think it's very, very important that our kids learn and to read labels, to eat healthier, to, to, to do all these things that we're talking about. Um, because I want their kids' kids to have less of the, that, the stuff that we have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, we can do that. So next time, we're going to try to shoot for maybe July. Okay. So one of the things that the chef has been doing is he's been working with the kids at Westinghouse High School in their culinary program. We were hoping to have them here with us today, but that didn't work out. But he does have a passion for making sure we go upstream and make sure our kids are yes. better educated on, on how to eat uh, more healthy. So, um, so allergies, they mentioned, anybody has any particular allergies, we'll make sure that when we do this again, we won't have any ingredients that might, you know, uh, Spark up your allergies. Like Pam's allergic to everything, so we just won't give her and anything. Less sodium, less sugar is something we talk about all the time. And one last thing, guys. So uh, this isn't on a script, but you're blessed enough to have Pastor. He cares about you. He cares about your health. He cares about the community. And I see the, the passion he has. You're actually really, really blessed to have him. Uh, have him here. Have him here.